Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to ask a question. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have a Shawnee, piloting Tibbet, Seller of Secrets. This mid-range deck tries to control the board until it can resolve its commander, outvalue its opponents, and then win with a Time Sieve combo or Thassa's Oracle. Ashani's opening hand contains a Lotus Petal, Misdirection, Mana Crypt, Drenith Magistrate, Transmute Artifact, Ottawara Soaring City, and Aristic Study. Next, we have Nick, pounding Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. This ninja deck wants to control the board and reveal some big mana spells from the top of its library with its commander's ability. Nick's opening hand contains a Moth Dust Changeling, Mox Amber, Mistblade Shinobi, Dark Slick Shores, Morphic Pool, Consigned to Oblivion, and his Linda Mulligan is a Mana Confluence. After that, we have Ryan, pounding Atraxa Grand Unifier. This four-color good stuff deck aims to win the game through food chain lines or a Thassa's Oracle combo. Ryan's opening hand contains a Chrome Mox, Mystic Remora, Force of Will, Smothering Tithe, Tainted Pact, Jataxian Probe, and a Noxious Revival. Finally, we have Cruz, piloting the partner pair of Dargo the Shipwrecker and Thrasios Triton Hero. This creature combo deck looks to make infinite mana and draw the deck with Thrasios' ability. Cruz's opening hand contains a Flusterstorm, Sylvan Library, Compost, Rhystic Study, Scalding Tarn, City of Brass, and a Pattern of Rebirth. Nick wins the Jello Pool Diving Competition and gets to start us off. Nick draws a card for turn and plays a Dark Slick Shores. He casts Phyrexian Walker. He casts a Mox Amber. He casts a Moth Dust Changeling. He ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and pays two life to cast Jataxian Probe, targeting a Shawnee. He looks at a Shawnee's hand and draws a card. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Mental Misstep. He casts Mystic Remora. He ends his turn. Cruz draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He gives the turn to a Shawnee. A Shawnee draws and plays a Tundra. He casts a Mana Crypt and Ryan draws through Remora. In response, Cruz cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. Mana Crypt resolves, and Ashani follows up by casting a Rhystic Study. Ryan draws through Remora, and in response, Ryan casts Force of Will for its alternate cost, paying a life and exiling Thassa's Oracle and targeting Rhystic Study. In response, Ashani casts Misdirection for its alternate cost, exiling Transmute Artifact, targeting Force of Will. Remora triggers, and Ryan draws. In response, Cruz casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Misdirection. Flusterstorm counters Misdirection, and Force of Will counters Rhystic Study. Next, Ashani casts a Lotus Petal and Ryan draws through Remora. Ashani passes. Nick draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Phyrexian Walker and Moth Dust Changeling. Ryan declares no blocks and, in response, Nick ninjutsus in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Phyrexian Walker to his hand. Ryan takes the hit and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a command tower and then reveals an island and the table breathes a sigh of relief. In his second main phase, Nick recasts Phyrexian Walker. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan pays to keep his Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. He casts an Avacyn's Pilgrim. He ships the turn to Cruz. Cruz draws and plays a City of Brass. He taps it to help cast the Sylvan Library, and Ryan draws through Remora. Cruz passes. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts a Dranith Magistrate. He gives the turn to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Fairy Seer. It enters, and Nick scries too. He activates Moth Dust Changeling, tapping Fairy Seer to give it flying until the end of turn. 
He boosts the combat and attacks Cruz with Yuriko and Phyrexian Walker and Ashani with Mothdust. Cruz declares no blocks and, in response, Nick Nijitsu's in Miss Blade Shinobi bouncing Phyrexian Walker to his hand. Cruz takes the hit and Yuriko triggers three times. Nick reveals a Sakashima student with each opponent losing four, a Flusterstorm with each opponent losing one, and a Marsh Flats. At the end of combat, Nick Ninjutsu's in Sakashima Student bouncing Miss Blade Shinobi to his hand. It enters as a copy of Dreneth Magistrate. In his second main phase, he casts Phyrexian Walker. Nick ships the turn to Ryan. At the end of Nick's turn, Ryan pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, putting Scalding Tarn from his graveyard onto the top of his library. During Ryan's upkeep, he pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts Smothering Tithe. Ryan ends his turn. During Cruz's draw step, Sylvan Library and Smothering Tithe trigger. Ryan creates a treasure, and then Cruz draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. Tithe triggers, and Ryan creates two more treasures. In his main phase, Cruz plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts a Ristic Study, and Ryan draws through Remora. Cruz passes. During his upkeep, Ashani wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, Tithe triggers, and Ryan creates a treasure. In his main phase, Ashani plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Hallowed Fountain onto the battlefield tapped. He gives the turn to Nick. Nick draws, Tithe triggers, and Ryan creates a treasure. In his main phase, Nick plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Fairy Seer, Cruz with Yuriko, Dranith Magistrate, and Moth Dust, and Ryan with Phyrexian Walker. Everyone declares no blocks, and in response, Nick ninjutsu's in Miss Blade Shinobi, bouncing Phyrexian Walker to his hand. Nick's opponents take the hit, and Yuriko triggers four times, and Miss Blade Shinobi triggers. Miss Blade Shinobi bounces Avacyn's Pilgrim, and Yuriko's trigger resolves. Nick reveals a Vampire Tutor with each opponent losing one, reveals a Mana Crypt, and reveals a Tainted Isle. With the last Yuriko trigger still in the stack, Nick casts Vampiric Tutor, Ristic and Mystic trigger, and Ryan and Cruz draw. Smothering Tide triggers, and Ryan creates a treasure. Tutor resolves, and Nick fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then the last trigger resolves, and Nick reveals a Common Deer with each opponent losing seven. In his second main phase, he casts a Mana Crypt. Ristic and Remora trigger, Cruz draws, Ryan creates a treasure through Tithe, and then Ryan draws. Nick casts Phyrexian Walker. Ristic triggers and Cruz draws, and Ryan makes a treasure through Tithe again. Nick ends his turn. At the end of Nick's turn, Ryan casts Worldly Tutor, paying the Ristic tax. In response, Nick casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Worldly Tutor. Ristic and Mystic trigger, Ryan draws, and Nick pays for Remora. Worldly Tutor is countered, and the turn moves to Ryan. During Ryan's upkeep, he pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts Avacyn's Pilgrim, paying the Ristic tax. Ryan passes, discarding to hand size. At the end of Ryan's turn, he reminds everyone to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to be notified of when we publish more. During Cruz's draw step, Sylvan Library and Smothering Tide trigger. Ryan creates a treasure, then Cruz draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. Tide triggers, and Ryan creates two more treasures. In his main phase, Cruz casts Chrome Mox, and Ryan draws through Remora. It enters, and Cruz imprints Compost. He plays a Mana Confluence. Wanting to add more triggers to the stack, he casts his own Mystic Remora. Remora triggers and Ryan draws. Cruz gives the turn to Ashani. At the end of Cruz's turn, Ashani channels Ottawara at Soaring City, bouncing Dranith Magistrate back to Nick's hand. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and Ryan creates a treasure. He plays a Spire of Industry for turn. He casts his commander, Tivit, Seller of Secrets. Cruz draws for Mystic and Ryan creates a treasure. Tivit enters and Ashani creates two treasures and three clues. Ashani passes. During his upkeep, Nick loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws and Ryan creates a treasure. Nick moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Fairy Seer and Cruz with Yuriko, Moth Dust Changeling, and Miss Blade Shinobi. In response, Ryan casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Cruz's Remora and Study trigger, and in response, Nick casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost targeting Cyclonic Rift. Remora, Remora, and Ristic trigger, Cruz draws two, Tithe triggers, Ryan creates two treasures, then Ryan draws through Remora. In response, Ryan casts Swan Song targeting Fierce Guardianship. Cruz's Remora and Ristic Trigger, and in response, Nick casts Commandeer for its alternate cost, exiling two blue cards targeting Cyclonic Rift. Remora, Ristic, and Remora Trigger, Nick pays for Remora, Cruz draws through Remora, Ryan creates another treasure, then Nick pays for Ristic. In response, Ryan casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Commandeer. Cruz draws through Remora and Ristic, and Ryan creates two treasures through Tithe. With no other answers, <sighs> Flusterstorm resolves, Commandeer is countered, Cruz draws two off of Remora and Ristic, Ryan creates two treasures, Swan Song counters Fierce Guardianship, Nick creates a 2 2 bird, then Cruz draws from his other Remora and Ristic trigger, Ryan creates two more treasures, and still in response to Cyclonic Rift, <sighs> Ashani sacrifices a clue, draws a card, and Ryan creates a treasure, then Ashani sacrifices another clue, draws a card, and Ryan creates another treasure, then Cruz floats a green mana, and after a very long journey, Cyclonic Rift finally resolves, and each opponent's non-land permanents are bounced. Nick attempts to move to his second main phase, and in response, Cruz casts Worldly Tutor. Ryan draws through Remora, then Cruz fetches up an Endurance onto the top of his library. Next, Nick casts Phyrexian Walker. He casts a Mana Crypt, and Ryan draws through Remora. He plays a Tainted Isle as his land for turn. He casts Fairy Seer. It enters, and he scries too. Nick ships the turn to Ryan. 
At the end of next turn, Ryan cracks his flooded strand, pays a life, and fetches up a watery grave onto the battlefield tapped. During Ryan's upkeep, Remora triggers and, in response, he casts Silence. In response, Cruz casts Veil of Summer and Ryan draws through Remora. Veil of Summer resolves and, in response, Ashani pays 2 life to cast Mental Misstep targeting Silence. Ryan draws through Remora and Silence is countered. Then Ryan lets his Remora die and he draws for turn. In his main phase, he casts that Mana Crypt. He casts a Wishclaw Talisman. In response, Cruz casts Mindbreak Trap for its ultimate cost, targeting and exiling Wishclaw Talisman. Ryan casts Tainted Pact. He exiles from the top of his library until he exiles Acerek the Arch Lich, putting it into his hand. He casts his commander, Atraxa, Grand Unifier. It enters, Ryan reveals the top 10 cards of his library, choosing Mnemonic Betrayal, Pact of Negation, Dress Down, Grand Abolisher, and Ottawa Soaring City into his hand. He casts Displacer Kitten. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Mana Crypt. Displacer Kitten triggers and Ryan targets Atraxa. In response, Nick channels Ottawa Soaring City, targeting Atraxa. In response, Ryan casts Pact of Negation, targeting his own Chain of Vapor in order to get a Kitten Trigger. Displacer Kitten triggers and Ryan targets Atraxa. Atraxa flickers, triggers, and Ryan reveals the top 10. He puts Demonic Tutor, Arcane Signet, Elvish Spirit Guide, and a Veil of Summer into his hand. With Ottawa's ability still in the stack, Ryan exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand for green to cast Veil of Summer. Displacer Kitten triggers and blinks Atraxa. Atraxa enters and Ryan reveals the top 10. He puts Windfall, Wild Growth, Soul Ring, Culling the Weak, Deathrite Shaman, and Command Tower into his hand. Then Veil of Summer resolves and Ryan draws. With Ottawara still on the stack, Ryan casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Avacyn's Pilgrim as an additional cost. Kitten triggers, flickers Atraxa, and Atraxa triggers. Ryan reveals the top 10, putting Lotus Petal, Food Chain, Imperial Seal, Drenith Magistrate, and a Besaju who endures into his hand. Then Culling the Weak resolves and Ryan adds 4 black. Then Pact of Negation resolves, but doesn't counter Chain of Vapor due to Veil of Summer. Then Nick's Ottawara channel resolves and bounces Atraxa back to Ryan's hand. Chain of Vapor then resolves, Ryan bounces Mana Crypt to his hand and doesn't continue the chain. He recasts Mana Crypt. Kitten triggers and blinks itself, then Mana Crypt resolves. He casts Food Chain. Kitten triggers, blinks Mana Crypt, and Food Chain resolves. He casts Lotus Petal. Kitten triggers, Ryan floats Mana, Mana Crypt flickers, and Lotus Petal resolves. He casts a Soul Ring. He flickers Mana Crypt, and Soul Ring resolves. He casts an Arcane Signet. Kitten triggers, flickers Mana Crypt, and Arcane Signet resolves. Ryan casts Deathrite Shaman. He exiles Deathrite to Food Chain, adding 2 blue. He casts Mist Hollow Griffin. He exiles it to Food Chain, adding 5 blue. He presents a loop of casting Miss Hollow from Exile, exiling it to Food Chain for 5 blue, and then repeating it until he has infinite blue creature mana. He repeats the loop with his extra blue mana until he has infinite black mana. He casts Acerek the Arch Lich. It enters, Ryan ventures into the Lost Mind of Fandelver, and Acerek returns to his hand. He recasts it over and over. Whenever he enters the Dark Pool room, each opponent loses one and Ryan gains one. And since Ryan never completes the Tomb of Annihilation, Ryan can bounce Acerek over and over until his opponents are dead, and Ryan wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great game this evening. Congrats to Ryan on his win. Ryan gained value from his Smothering Tithe and Remora in the early game, got his commander on board, and fought through the counters to win. The most valuable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Smothering Tithe. Many people say that this card is too slow for CEDH. When equipped with the right deck, however, this card is still a powerhouse. Ryan was able to get the mana he needed to cast multiple spells, including the crazy cost of his commander. Nobody wants to pay two for your treasure, and this card does so much work in mid-range decks. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time, and we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.